Jim Gamble. Good morning to you, Jim. 18 people are now behind bars, which presumably one would hope means children are safer. Is it worth it then? Well, I think we should celebrate the fact that 18 people are behind bars, but uh, I don't think we should just accept uh, that the use of a child rapist uh, was you know, fundamental to this. There are lots of tactics that can be employed. And it's easy for me to commentate from the margins on this. I, I, I get that. I've run informants in counterterrorism and in, in organized crime. It's complex. But using a child rapist, I can't imagine uh, the circumstances where I feel you could satisfy the test of legality, proportionality uh, and necessity uh, for that. And the risks and the control measures around it, well, I just don't see how uh, you could have operated tight enough control to ensure that an informant of this character wouldn't have used what they saw as a, an umbrella of protection uh, to facilitate their own offending or inappropriate engagement with young people. Well, I mean, as we've said, and as you've said, the police say categorically that dangerous men wouldn't be behind bars without the help of this informant. They believed that they had no other option. Um, so they're sort of suggesting that actually they had to cross the line or they had to go to a very dark place to get somebody in order to facilitate the, uh, the imprisonment of 18 or the convictions of 18 uh, very dangerous people, Jim. And I think we need to, we need to scrutinise that because this tactic is so lawfully audacious. It doesn't just go up to the line in the minds of many, it, it goes across it. So what we need to do is not have a review by the Office of Surveillance Commissioner, not have the IPCC carry out a, a procedural review. What we need to do is have a fundamentally independent safeguarding review. We need to look at who this person was, what they did, what control measures were applied, and when they weren't operating by or on behalf of the police, what else did they do? And, and I know the, the Police and Crime Commissioner Vera Baird up there extremely well, and I would ask her, you know, for the sake of public confidence in the competence of this tactic to instigate that type of transparent review because it's, if we're going to use this tactic, if this tactic has indeed been successful, if they have been able to control this informant, which I very much doubt, then let, let's learn lessons from it. And the only way you can do that is by having an open and transparent review, not the, the, the simple rhetoric that says the end justifies the means, yeah, because describe, whose uh, daughter Jim, can be sacrificed in that? Jim, you, you describe it as lawfully audacious. Uh, and, and let's face it, the people that have, uh, have now been found guilty are becoming more and more audacious in the way they manipulate and they take advantage of vulnerable young people, girls and boys as well. So surely, actually, the argument would be you have to fight fire with fire. Well, f fighting fire with fire and using every tactic, technical and human resource that you can is one thing. But let's look you know, at this. This is a child rapist. What we know from the, the psychology involved is that they minimise, self-justify and blame others. And we've had many conversations about the way they do that. They control and condition people around them. They groom their victims. So we're not talking about you know, a, a, a someone who steals something, someone who is involved even in acts of armed robbery or terrorism. We're talking about someone who's driven by a sexually motivated crime. And what about the victim that this informant raped? What about the survivor of that horrendous event and how they're feeling today? Well, so we can talk in these terms, but other people's daughters, other people's you know, sons, other people's relatives are being put in the line of fire when someone like this feels that they have the protection provided by being a police informant. And all I'm saying is the devil will be in the detail. detail. Steve Ashman and others will have that detail. But we now need to reflect on this tactic because it's been exposed because of the trial, not because police decided to share it, and we need to be able to have a look at it to make judgments about whether it should ever be used yeah. again. I mean, we all know, though, and we on this program have spoken to victims of uh, the Rotherham horrible, horrible um, cases there, and indeed Rochdale as well. And now the chief executive of Newcastle Council, who's a former Crown prosecutor, says that this is going on in every city in the country. So for all that we would like a review, because we would like processes to be done in the best possible way, I think we're all very scared and just want this kind of activity stopped. Of course we do, and that's why we should encourage victims and survivors to come forward. Very often the reason we have to revert to other tactics is because victims aren't treated credibly enough, so we need to educate and empower them, because too often assumptions are made that they won't be, one, credible, or two, that they won't want to give evidence. Yet we know there were many, many victims, you know, who were truly courageous and gave evidence in this case. 
that's the type of evidence that identifies the people who are involved and actually holds them to account. And I'm the independent chair of a number of boards across London. I am absolutely, you know, I, I understand child sexual exploitation and I know we need to use every tactic we can, but in, engaging and empowering a child rapist in this way is so high risk, we need to reflect on it. And I don't accept, with all due respect, uh, that this person was pivotal. He has given no evidence in any of the cases. And when you read the transcript uh, of the trial where the judge looked at his conduct, of course, she said, universally, he's a liar. He's someone who can't be believed. Well, actually, that person doesn't just lie uh, to those around them to infiltrate a group. He lies and manipulates with the police as well. That's the nature of this type of informant. So, okay, thank you. Very interesting, Jim. Good to talk to you this morning. That's Jim Gamble, Child Exploitation Online Protection Centre, the former head of that group. Good to talk to you.